Have you ever been mistreated? I don't mean everyday frustrations like, you know, having to wait too long for somebody or dealing with difficult people. I mean, have you ever been mistreated to the point that your human dignity was damaged? Perhaps you've been bullied or neglected by a loved one. Maybe you know what it's like to be discriminated against. Maybe you live with wounds that are on the inside and needs that are invisible because uh, you struggle with mental illness or you have an addiction or maybe you just have to hide a part of who you really are. And absolutely, being invisible or excluded is a form of mistreatment. How do we even measure the worth of persons? I mean, do you do it with a calculator? I mean, I can say without thing if somebody asked me the question, you know, what's the worth of human life or what's the worth of being a person? What's human worth? I would say absolutely without, without even thinking about it. I believe in the inestimable worth of persons. I even know the community of Christ enduring principle, the worth of persons. The problem is, is that we live in a world that doesn't measure human worth in that way, in the abstract or just because we say it. We experience what our worth really is in, in everyday ways, and feeling our inestimable worth isn't always very easy. In our economy, we're measured by the value of our skills and effort or time. How much should you get paid? What about the cost of keeping your family healthy and growing? What's the value of human life then? Political decisions impact the value of human life all the time, every day. I mean, whether it's governments measuring population growth or crafting spending bills or they're passing laws that impact economic opportunities or the way people are treated. Or what about whether everyone has affordable health care or whether a state has capital punishment? Should society provide a safety net? Should we deploy troops? What is the value of a soldier's life? What about a criminal's life? At what point do you remove a child from a parent's home? What's the value of the child's life? What's the value of the parent's life? What's the value of a parent's life when they can't be with their own child? The considerations are just incredibly complex. Mistreating people is a sin. Christians really can't afford to be confused about that. And so mistreatment happens because of things we do in, in personal relationships, interpersonal relationships, like families, friendships, and supposedly loving relationships. But mistreatment also happens because of human systems. Sometimes those systems are global. Listen to the words of Doctrine and Covenants 163 4a. God weeps for the poor, displaced, mistreated, and diseased of this world because of their unnecessary suffering. Our enduring principle explains that human worth is not only inestimable, you can't put a measurement on it, but it's also equal. God views all people with un inestimable and equal worth. So inequality is actually a form of mistreatment. And we cannot control life's consequences. We can't always control the consequences of our own decisions. But we certainly can control how we respond and how we treat each other. People have all sorts of interesting reactions to religious belief. I mean, some people think believing in God is pretty normal, and other people just simply don't care. But in Jewish and Christian tradition, I want to inform you, I want to tell you, I want to proclaim that actually this idea of believing in God, believing in one God, has an explosive kind of radical impact on what it means to understand human worth. We, every human being on this planet, regardless of borders, regardless of boundaries, regardless of culture, regardless of economic condition, status of any kind, we're all one big human family, children of this one God. And each and every one of us bear God's image. That idea in practice is explosive. It's absolutely amazing. This idea that we all bear the image of God or are made in God's image comes from the first chapter of Genesis. And this, this idea theologically about what it means to be made in the image of God has changed over the centuries. At certain times in, in, in theological history, in the Christian tradition, you know, it meant that we looked like God, like God had a human form. But at other times, having the image of God meant that we had 
human beings possessed a certain kind of divine capacity, like we could reason, or human beings could exclusively, out of all creation, have this kind of special relationship with God, a, a living relationship with a living God. Imagine that the image of God is not made in just or, or impressed on one person, but it belongs to the whole of collective humanity. That means the image of God is really incomplete without each other. It means that our relationships, the relationships between us, are actually part of that image. That's why mistreatment is breaking of a relationship. This idea that we are all belonging to one God, children of one God, and bearing that one God's image, if you think about it in practical terms, economic, political, cultural, social, interpersonal, and even intrapersonal, how I think of myself, it's an explosive idea that could transform the way we look at the world. And frankly, we don't even really need everybody to agree with us or believe in it in order for it to happen. We really just have to treat each other right. We have to treat each other like we want to be treated ourselves. And doesn't this sound a little bit like Jesus' teaching? If you haven't, I really encourage you to pick up the January and February Herald article. The Herald is the official magazine of the Community of Christ. And read this one on the worth of persons. In it, Robin Luffman and uh, Dave Anderson do a really beautiful job of introducing us to this idea of the worth of person, particularly through our inquiry uh, in this series about journey journeying towards Jesus, the peaceful one. I also want you to keep your eye out on social media, the Facebook page, and other Community of Christ sources of information so you can join the live discussion about this article and also talk to the authors and, under, and be able to contribute to, you know, this talk about what it means to realize and understand the inestimable and equal worth of persons. I'm convinced the more and more I, I live my life that we live in a world that's constantly measuring things and, and wants to put a value just about in on everything that exists. And the fact is, is that human beings will never be able to fit into that box or to be put into a idea of value. It's, uh, where's that? Where's that calculator I had? It's never going to look like this. So I just encourage you to take a look and to read along with us and to join the conversation. It's a prophetic idea, and it's something that we need to keep thinking about and considering in our world, because ultimately Jesus' story is a story about being mistreated. It's a story about a teacher who teaches us how to treat people. It's also a story about how God wants and does treat us. And so... The power of the resurrection is really the power of the inestimable and equal worth that's born in all people. May it be so.